Fun fact, did you know that barley is Canada's fourth largest crop? Well, it's delicious. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to use barley flour. We're gonna make these delicious barley soft pretzels. Let's make them. So the first thing we have to do to get these pretzels started is to get our yeast working. To do that, we're gonna add one and a half cups of lukewarm or tepid water. Now this is really important. The water has to be warm to the touch. Not too hot, not too cold, but this will help the yeast activate. To help activate the yeast, we're also gonna add a little bit of Canadian honey. You need a tablespoon here. Feel free to measure it out. I'm just gonna free pour. Now the honey will help the yeast come to life because of course the yeast loves honey. Gotta get this open, let me get a pair of scissors or a knife, there we go. This is just your traditional active dry yeast and we're gonna get that right in there. Now, if you've had your yeast in your cupboard for a little while, you might want to consider getting some new stuff. What you can do is if you have a couple of packages, just take one of those packages uh, and just dump maybe a little bit into some warm water and let it sit for 10 minutes and see if it comes to life. So we're just going to give this a quick stir. It's going to sit there for 10 minutes and when um, it's ready, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just wanna show you what it looks like when that yeast is starting to come to life. You can see that it's starting to pop up into this more cloudy liquid. Uh, and that's how you know that it's alive and then it's gonna do the job that it needs to do. Now that our yeast has proofed, you can see what it looks like right in the bowl. It's gotten all foamy uh, and you can see that it's come to the top of the surface and it's making little bubbles. It also smells like the start of bread, which I love that smell. Now we're going to add our flour. Of course, we're going to use barley flour and we love barley flour because it is high in fiber and it has a really beautiful nutty taste. It has both soluble and insoluble fiber, but it doesn't have quite enough gluten uh, for this recipe. So we are going to use equal parts barley flour and wheat flour. So we're going to use a cup and a half of each. And I'm just going to grab a spoon to measure that out. Now I like to take my flour and spoon it into my cup to get a proper measurement here. Perfect, so that's a cup of barley flour and then we'll get another half cup. Now you can buy barley flour in the grocery store or where I bought my bar, uh, barley flour is a bulk food store. It's really easy to get and you haven't worked with it before, you might wanna start with a smaller amount uh, and that way, you know, when you get it home, you're just going to try it out and, and see how you like it. But I promise you, you're going to love it for this recipe. So that is our barley flour. Next up, we're going to use our just regular wheat flour. If you want to use barley in other recipes like quick breads or muffins, you can actually just substitute all barley flour for the wheat flour. All right. So we have a cup here of our wheat flour and another half cup. You can also use barley flour for dredging things like chicken to make chicken fingers. Uh, you can use it to thicken sauces like roux. It also works really well for that. So there's a number of ways you can use barley flour in your kitchen. Okay, the next ingredients to go in here are some salt. Now this recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of salt. You can measure that out, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And then two tablespoons of softened butter. So I'm just gonna start stirring that up. I'm gonna start with my spatula here. And then I'm probably gonna get in there with my hands because we are going to knead this. When you're kneading a dough like this, what it does is it helps to develop that gluten that's in the wheat flour. So you end up with that beautiful chew that we all know and love in a soft pretzel. I don't know about you, but when I used to go to the uh, baseball game with my dad, soft pretzels were the things that I always went for. And of course, my favorite topping, another great Canadian ingredient would be mustard. Okay, so we just brought this together in a shaggy dough. So you can have a quick look here and what that looks like. And now we are going to turn it out onto our surface and knead it. So I'm just gonna move this board over. And you can use a little bit of wheat flour and a little bit of barley flour to do that. You can still feel that 
the dough is slightly warm from that warm water that we use to proof the yeast. Now, if you have a stand mixer and you prefer to use a stand mixer for something like this, by all means, you can absolutely do that. But this is a small batch and it's sometimes nice to do this sort of thing by hand. Of course, you can get other family members involved in making this. And this is a really nice treat, these pretzels for a movie night or if you're just hanging around when you come in from maybe tobogganing if it's the winter time. It's a nice way to enjoy a snack. All right. So you can see that this dough right now is a little bit wet. It's sticking to my surface here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. And this is something that takes a little bit of practice in terms of knowing how that feels. But you can also see that it's a nice, beautiful, soft dough. And we're gonna knead this for about 10 minutes until it's nice and smooth and elasticy. So I just wanna show you quickly what that kneading looks like to me. So what I like to do is I like to take my hand and pull it to the front, turn the bread or turn the dough over and then use my heel to push it back. And then I like to turn it again, pull it back and push it. So there's many different ways you can do it, but that's my way. You can also use two hands as you see me using here. And we're gonna do this for about 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes of kneading and come in closer. I'm gonna show you what we've got. This is what it looks like. It's nice and soft and the dough bounces back when you put your fingers into it so you know that you've developed that gluten beautifully. Now it has to sit for an hour and a half to rise. So I'm just gonna take a clean bowl and I put a little bit of canola oil in there and we're gonna pop that dough right in there and we're gonna cover it with a tea towel. You can also use a little bit of plastic wrap that will help keep it nice and warm so your little dough will rise. An hour and a half, and then we'll be ready to roll out our pretzels. So the dough's been sitting for an hour and a half, so let's take a look inside. It should have doubled in volume, and you can see that it definitely has. I'm gonna lift it out, gorgeous. See how soft that is when you touch it, it kind of shrinks down. And we're going to get it back onto our surface and we're going to make our pretzel shapes. And that's really easy, probably easier than you think. So we're gonna get this out here. And the key here is to cut the dough into 12 equal pieces. So it doesn't matter really what shape it is to start, but I like to sort of make it a rectangle so I get some equal parts. I'm gonna eyeball this. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. There we go. This one's a bit smaller than this one, but that's okay. It'll all turn out in the end. Now let's rock and roll these pretzels out. Again, you want a floured surface for this because when you cut the dough, it does reveal a little bit of a softer side. So each of these 12 are going to get rolled into approximately 25 centimeter rope. Now this can take some practice. So if the first time you find it a little bit difficult to roll, practice makes perfect. Now this is probably about 25 centimeters. It'll probably be a little bit longer and that's okay. Uh, and this is how I like to shape it into a pretzel. So I am going to cross the tops over and then pull them back down over themselves and just press it down. I like to open these holes up a little bit. And we have two sheet pans here that have been lightly oiled and we're going to pop those on there and continue doing the rest. Wanna see one more? Let's do it. All right, a little bit of flour there. Now, some of them you might th find get a little bit thinner than this if it's a little bit less dough and that's okay. But you do want it long enough so you can create that iconic pretzel shape. Okay, so let's do that again. So for me, I like to take the two ends and cross them at the top and then just flip them over on themselves and then just give them a little press. All right, see how cute those are? Now these will um, start to rise just a little bit more as we continue to do the rest of these pretzels. These pieces are a little bit smaller, so instead of trying to stretch the dough really thin, I'm gonna make some pretzel bites, which you can also do with this dough, and it's quite easy. I'm just gonna roll it into a little 
rope and then I'm going to cut them into pieces and they will get baked and treated the same way as the pretzels do. We'll just pop them on our baking sheet. Okay, so now it's time to cook our pretzels. So this is a two-part cooking method, but don't stress out, it's really easy. We're gonna start at the stove top and boiling a large pot of water. And to that water, we are going to add half a cup of baking soda. Now you wanna do this a little bit at a time because as you know, when you add baking soda, this is what happens. We get all those bubbles. So add a little bit of a t at a time to ensure that your water does not bubble over the top of the pot. Okay, and you might be saying, why are we adding baking soda to water? Well, that does something amazing to the pretzels. It does two things actually. The first thing is that it helps give the pretzels that beautiful chewiness that we love about pretzels. And the other thing is that it actually helps to um, aid in the browning process. It gives it that gorgeous brown exterior. What it does actually is it changes the pH of the water with that baking soda. So grab yourself a slotted spoon. Also have your oven preheated to 450 degrees. So here are our lovely little pretzels. And these get boiled for about 25 or 30 seconds. Now you don't want to crowd that pot. We're going to put three or four in here depending on the size of your pot. This guy fell apart a little bit, that's okay. You know what, if they don't turn out perfectly, well, I promise you, they will still be delicious. Okay, we're gonna turn that heat up a little bit because you saw as we dropped the pretzels in there, the bubbling went down on the boiling. So now we don't want this to be a hard, hard boil. You don't wanna like, you know, overboil them. You just wanna sort of simmer them. So we're gonna flip them over so both sides of the pretzels get a little bit of that alkaline bath. And on the other side of my pot here, I have a baking sheet that's oiled with a little bit of canola oil, as well as some milk. I'm gonna brush those pretzels with milk and then some toppings of your choice. You can use sesame seeds or poppy seeds, a little bit of everything bagel spice. If you wanna make them sweet, which you totally can, you can put a little bit of cinnamon sugar on there as well. All right, let's have a look here. These guys look just about right. So you wanna get off any excess water and then we're going to just tip them over onto our baking sheet. And you wanna do all of these before you put them in the oven. So we're gonna do all 12, oops. There you go, let's do the rest. Don't forget your pretzel bites. The last step before they go into the oven is just to brush them lightly with a bit of milk. We do that to all the pretzels, including the little pretzel bites that we made. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then we're going to put our topping on there. Now, like I said, you can use whatever you like. My family loves a little everything but the bagel seasoning. It's salty, it's nutty, it's garlicky. You could even put a little bit of cheese on here. I've done cheese and jalapeno ones before. But these barley soft pretzels are super delicious. Great for a game day snack, a great treat for anyone really. Kids of any age, I say. And don't forget these little pretzel bites. Now, these little pretzel bites will take a little bit less time than the big pretzels. So if you're doing them on the same sheet pan, just be sure to check on them early. So we're gonna put these in for seven to eight minutes to start and then we're gonna check on them. And then we're gonna rotate our pans and do another seven or eight minutes until they are beautiful and golden brown. So let's get those in the oven. Right onto that middle rack there. Now we wait. So they've cooked for the first seven minutes. Let's have a look. Let's pull them out. We'll put them right on top here. You can see they're starting to get a little bit brown, but they're not quite where we want them. So we're just gonna rotate them and put them back in the oven for another seven minutes. Here they are out of the oven, golden brown, smelling delicious. There's nothing like the way fresh baked bread or pretzels smell in your house. We're gonna give these a try. These are super delicious. You can see how nice and golden brown they are with a little bit of that everything bagel spice on there. Let's give them a try. Mm. 
know what's missing? A little bit of mustard. Those are soft barley pretzels. I hope you guys make them. Check out the recipe.